Hey guys, today we're gonna take a look at the new skills that got added into Sunbreak. I'm gonna explain to you how they work and also give you some additional tips, so let's jump right into it. Starting out with Harvest Moon, or as I like to call it, the Circle. This one is gonna cost you two wire bugs and they take quite a long time to get back. So unless you're not using your wire bugs for anything else, you probably won't have access to this during the entire hunt. And that's why you have to be careful to not waste your Circle. Now, the amazing thing about this is, while you are in it, you will have infinite spirit gauge and all of your counter-based attacks get additional hits. However, the big downside is you cannot leave the circle and also you can't shift your weapon to heal, for example. So personally, I haven't been playing around with this too much. So if you try and leave the circle, you will get knocked back, which is fine, but if you try and leave a second time, your circle will disappear and you are gonna be sad. Another cool thing about the circle is you don't actually have to connect your force at slash in order to be able to go for your spirit finisher, you only have to get the guard point. Now as I mentioned earlier, I personally don't like using this too much because I just feel like it hinders your movement too much and I love using sacred slash for example and that one you gotta be really careful to not step out of the circle. Next up we're gonna talk about my favorite addition to Sunbreak which is the sacred chief. This move is gonna drain all of your spirit levels in exchange for 3 juicy hits. If you want to charge and put your spirit levels into it, you simply gotta hold down the inputs. However, during the initial sheath animation, you have the option to just let go and perform a manual counter. You have enough time to perform the counter until your weapon is fully sheathed. So if the timing on your counter is good, you will be able to go into your spirit finisher. If you are getting hit while holding down the buttons, you will not take damage in exchange for a spirit level, but the good news is you can go into spirit blade level 2 right away. All of the footage you have seen so far was with quickshift level 3, so here's a comparison without that. So the amazing thing about not using quickshift is it extends the window you're able to go for the manual counter. If you get caught by surprise while charging, you can simply let go and make use of the hyper armor that is on this move. And again, go into your Spirit Blade level 2. After you complete the full charge, you actually have two options. The first one is going into Forcet Slash and get your Spirit level back that way. If you have enough time after the big hit, you can simply go into your Spirit Finisher again. Next I want to talk about the hop. Simply hold the direction and press the B button and you can do this as long as you have stamina. Now of course this is super useful to get out of harm's way and hop back into action. And the best thing about this is, it gets affected by Evade Window and Evade Extender. Just look at the distance you can cover with Evade Extender level 3. But honestly, Evade Window is the true king with this. Just let me show you some gameplay clips that highlight how good it is. I, yeah, alright, cool. Let me charge. Um, let me just iframe through that, it's just no problem. <laughs> it's kinda broken. See what he does. Just iframe. Dude, my timing there sucked balls. It is so generous, I'm telling you. And don't forget to make use of the hyper armor on this thing. You just gotta be careful with attacks that grab you, or for example, Ragnar Kadaki's web. And also you're not safe from elemental blights, like for example, if you do this through Gosorak's Ice Beam, you will still get the Ice Blight. And finally, we have the Tempered Spirit Blade. This is pretty much just another counter that costs one wire bug. The Y-Bug comes back super fast and the amazing thing about this is, you don't even have to connect the counter to the monster to gain the spirit level. So now we are able to get to Red Gauge without even being near a monster. Here's another awesome thing about this counter you probably didn't know. And that is, if you perform it during your spirit combo, you will pick up where you left off after the counter. So if you can time this right, get to Spirit Blade level 3, perform the counter, you can go into Round Slash or Reckoning right afterwards and gain 2 spirit levels super fast. Another awesome thing about this is, if you fail your timing on the Sacred Chief counter, this is your only option to avoid damage. Alright, that is all I wanted to share with you today. I hope it was helpful and I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, happy hunting, bye bye.